Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Warframe damage video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over status chance and status duration, how both of those mechanics work, as well as how you can build for them on your weapons. Status effects are often referred to as procs, and what a proc is, is a programmed random occurrence. So calling something a proc just means that it has a random chance to occur in game. With status effects, every time you shoot or hit an enemy, you're going to have a chance to affect that enemy with a status proc. A status proc's occurrence is based on two different factors. The first and most obvious is going to be your status chance in your arsenal. Now the first thing I want to say about arsenal stats is that they're not always accurate, and that's definitely the case for status chance. The status chance you see listed in the arsenal is based on three different factors. The first is the base status chance of the weapon, the second is any status chance mods you might have, and the third is multi-shot. Now multi-shot's really the culprit of messing up this formula. So to see a practical example first, let's look at the Soma Prime. If I were to take an unmodded Soma Prime and then put Split Chamber and Vigilante Armaments on it, the status chance would increase from 10 to 23.2%. Now, I'm not actually increasing the status at all here. I'm just increasing the number of pellets I'm shooting. Each of the pellets will have a 10% chance to proc a status. So here I've gone from 10% to 23% just by increasing the number of shots I'm firing. Because of this, adding multi-shot to a weapon can increase your overall chance to cause a status proc, but it's not going to increase the pellet's individual chance to cause that status proc. You're just increasing your overall status chance by increasing your number of shots and not actually increasing the status. For automatic weapons like the Soma, this is less of an issue. But if we were to look at something like the Tiger's Prime, for example, the Tiger's Prime at base has 30% status chance, but it also has eight pellets. So even though it's not displayed here on the UI, each of those pellets only has a 4.36% chance to proc a status, but altogether combined, they have a 30% chance. So I hope that makes sense. It's not actually telling you the status chance for each pellet. It's telling you the overall chance to proc a status with one shot. If we were to put four of the 6060 status mods on the Tiger's Prime here, that would increase to 100%. Now, that number being at 100% without adding multi-shot is going to mean that every single pellet will cause a status. So you've actually reached 100%. And if you're going for a 100% status chance on a weapon, you want to reach that before getting the multi-shot. So for example, if we were to take one of the 6060 status mods out, we would get 84% status chance on the Tiger's Prime. If we were to then add Hell's Chamber and Vigilante Armaments for an additional 180% multi-shot, that number would then climb to 99.4% status chance. But remember, because we've reached this percent with multi-shot, it's not actually what our status chance is. The status chance per pellet is actually 20.4%. Now you might say, whoa, 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 wasn't it just 84%? And yes, it was. But remember, the Tiger's Prime has eight pellets starting out. So because of that, with the 84% status chance, you're only actually getting a 20% chance per pellet, and then the 84 represents the entire shot's status chance. If you want to know how to calculate this for yourself, you just take one minus one minus the current status chance of the weapon to the power of one divided by the pellet count. Now, depending on multi-shot, this can be different. So with the Tiger's Prime here, with the two multi-shot mods, we take 8 times 2.8, which will then give us a modded pellet count of 22.4. Now, this brings me to another part of why multi-shot's damage calculation is an issue, and that is that you can't have half pellets. So what the 0.4 on this means is that you simply have a 40% chance of shooting that additional pellet at the end. And because that additional 0.4 is part of the game's damage calculation, all the numbers are going to be slightly off, so you're either going to hit 22 pellets or you're going to hit 23. You're not going to hit 22.4 pellets, it doesn't make any sense. But the game still shows you numbers representing the 0.4 pellet. So basically all I'm saying here is that you shouldn't be taking the numbers to the left at face value, especially when dealing with multi-shot. But let's get back to status chance. Because multi-shot works the way that it does, you want to make sure you have whatever status chance you want before adding the multi-shot mods. So here on the Tiger's Prime, we want to have four 60-60 mods to increase our status chance to 100% and then add the multi-shot afterwards. This will give our Tiger's Prime 100% status chance on each of its pellets, simply because of how the formula works, which is here, and then if you wanna know more about the formula, I would suggest you check the wiki, and they have a great article on it under status chance. But basically, I just wanna make sure you guys understand that you're modding for the individual pellet, and then adding the multi-shot afterwards. This is far more important on shotguns that have a higher pellet count initially, as opposed to a weapon like the Soma that's only firing one pellet at a time. And it's going to vary from weapon to weapon, so I suggest you do your research beforehand to understand how modding on that weapon is going to work. Because it's going to be different on a case-by-case -case basis, and I can't cover them all in this one video. But now that we've talked about how the status chance is calculated, let's talk about how the damage distribution on a weapon will affect which status you cause. Now weapons in Warframe, and especially ones that you're modding, are going to have composite damage. Meaning that there are going to be multiple different damage types occurring, all with the same pellet. 
Let's go back to the Soma Prime to understand this. If you've seen my physical damage video, this is going to sound very familiar. But the Soma Prime deals 12 damage with each shot. Each of these pellets contain a combination of 1.2 impact damage, 4.8 puncture damage, and 6 slash damage. So each of the individual pellets of an unmodded Soma are going to deal these damage types. Now let's look at a corrosive based Soma build to understand how the status distribution works. Now what do I mean by status distribution? Each pellet can only cause one status proc. So that means that even though you have multiple damage types per pellet, only one of those damage types is going to cause a status. So even though each pellet on the Soma Prime here is going to be dealing impact slash puncture and corrosive, only one of those status procs can occur at a time. So one pellet could cause an impact proc, the next one could cause a slash proc, and so on and so forth. Now here you might think that there's an even chance to proc all these statuses, and that's not the case. Your chance to proc a specific damage type status is going to depend on how much of that damage type your weapon is dealing per shot. So here we have high corrosive damage with okay puncture and slash and low impact. So here impact is going to proc the least, simply because it has the lowest damage. But even though the physical damage values here are much lower than the elemental damage of the corrosive, that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to have a lower chance to proc. And that's because physical statuses are weighted four times the amount of elemental statuses, meaning that you need to have four times the amount of elemental damage to have the same chance to proc an elemental status as you do a physical status. So to figure out what the exact status distribution is going to be for the Soma Prime here, you want to take the impact, slash, and puncture and multiply them all by four, at which point you can add each of their values to the elemental value, which here we only have corrosive, but it would be the same method if we had multiple elements. So here when we do add all these values up, we get 359.7. We can then use this number to figure out what the chance is to proc each of these individual statuses. The way we do this is by taking the final damage value. So let's take slash for example here. The final weighted damage value for slash is 118. So we'll take that 118 and we'll divide it by 359.7. This then gives us the chance to proc a slash status per pellet, which is 32.8. And you'll be able to use the same method for each of the other damage types. So if we were to then use it for corrosive, which has 123.7, and then you divide that by 359.7, you'll end up with 34.38% chance to proc a corrosive status. So here you'll have higher chance to proc corrosive than you will slash, but you'll still have a very high chance to proc slash damage compared to corrosive, even though we're doing very little comparative damage. And you can use the same technique for any other damage composition, and it'll tell you what your chance is to proc those statuses. But remember, this isn't the status chance for the weapon itself. It's just the status distribution based on the individual damage types and how much of them you've modded for. The basic principle here is that the more of a single damage type you have on a weapon, the higher your chance is to proc that status on an enemy. And I won't be going into the individual status procs here, simply because I've already gone over them in my previous three videos. So I suggest checking those out if you want to know about a certain damage proc. And the last thing I want to talk about here is the status duration. Increasing a status's duration, such as slash, is a good way to increase your overall damage, because when you increase the duration of a damage-based status, you're also going to be increasing the number of ticks you get. Personally, I can't really justify using a status duration mod, and that's because enemies are usually going to die within your status durations window, considering most of them are about 6 seconds. But if you're taking longer than 6 seconds to kill an enemy, having a longer status duration can be beneficial. Although there are easier ways to increase the duration of your status effects. And that's from any kind of slowing effect, so like Nova's 4 Molecular Prime, or Atlas's 3 Petrify, or even just a basic cold proc. All of these are ways to slow down enemies and increase the duration of your status procs. And if you're using something like an ability to slow enemies, it's going to give you more value versus a status duration mod where you're going to be losing some kind of damage, multi-shot, or other stat. And while we're on the topic of status duration, let's talk about having negative status duration. Having negative status duration is only possible through Riven mods, where you get a negative 100% or higher status duration roll. Having a negative status duration will nullify a few of the status procs, which I'll list here. These status effects, on the other hand, will still apply normally. I wanted to make sure I mentioned this just in case you ever run into this situation. Even though it's quite rare, having a negative status duration only affects certain status procs, and it's good to know which ones when you're modding. Speaking of modding, let's take a look at when you should be modding for status chance. When you're looking to mod a weapon for status, you should be asking yourself how often you want to proc that status and make sure that whatever weapon you're using either has a high status chance or a high fire rate. Because if you're firing faster, even if you have a lower status chance, you're going to be proccing more statuses overall. So for an automatic weapon like the Soma Prime here, you don't really need a ton of status chance. But if you're using a slower fire rate weapon, like the Dread, you would want a higher status chance because you're shooting less projectiles at once. So just pay attention to what the status effect is you want to cause, how often you want to proc that status, so something like maybe Viral you want to proc every 6 seconds, but maybe with a damaging status like Slash you want to proc it as often as possible. 
So just pay attention to what kind of status you're trying to cause and how often you're going to cause that status with a weapon. There's not really one universal way to build for status, so you should be taking it on a case-by-case -case basis. And while we are talking about mods, I want to go over a few special mods that work differently from the regular status mods. The first are weapon augment mods that you can purchase from syndicates for reputation. Some of these, not all of them, will have plus base status chance to whatever weapon the augment is for. So if we take a look at Entry Reverse here for the Super Vandal, this augment gives the Supra plus 20 base status. So on the Super Vandal, it goes from 30 status chance to 50 status chance just with one mod, and that's additive. So if you were to then put another status mod on top of this, such as High Voltage, that would increase to 68%. Now you might notice here that I'm only getting plus 18% status chance, and that's because the High Voltage mod works on the original base and the super augment just gives you plus 20 status on top of whatever your modded status chance is. So if you had 80 modded status chance and you would then put the augment on, it would give you 100%. Although for a high fire rate automatic weapon like the Supra, having 100% status chance really isn't necessary, but it is a whole lot of fun. The other special mod I wanna talk about is Weeping Wounds. Weeping Wounds is an acolyte mod and it works just like Blood Rush does with crit. But in Weeping Wounds case, it gives you extra status chance. Now I am making this video prior to Melee 3.0, so this is subject to change. But currently this is how Weeping Wounds works. For every additional one combo multiplier you have, Weeping Wounds acts like an additional 45% status chance on top of whatever your mod status chance is. To understand how this works with a practical example, let's take a look at my Plague Crit Path in game. You can see that my base status chance is 32%. If I were to then add Drifting Contact to this build, it would go up to 44.8%. If I were to then add Weeping Wounds to this build, you wouldn't see any change in the arsenal. But for every one combo multiplier that I get, Weeping Wounds will increase my current value by 45%. So if I were to have, let's say, a 2 combo multiplier here, my status chance would go from 44.8% to 85.12. Meaning that with just a 2 combo multiplier, I'm getting almost double the status chance. If I were to then add only one additional status mod to this, keeping with the 2 combo multiplier, my status chance would go over 120%, which is over the 100% cap, meaning that every hit I deal is going to inflict a status effect, which is what makes Weeping Wounds such a strong melee mod, because the higher your melee combo climbs, the more status chance you're going to get. And because unlike crit chance, status chance has a cap, it's very easy to reach the 100% cap with Weeping Wounds, assuming you're maintaining your combo multiplier. And if you guys want to figure out this formula for yourself, you simply just take your base status chance multiplied by any status mods you have on the weapon times one plus the Weeping Wounds multiplier multiplied by your current combo counter. And that'll give you your current status chance based on your combo counter with Weeping Wounds. But hopefully this video is giving you guys an idea of what status chance is, how to mod for it, and how it works. If there's anything I missed or if you have any additional questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. And if you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like. And make sure you hit that subscribe button for more content like this. But that's it for me guys. Hope you're all having a good one and I'll see you later.